Okay, I'm uh, going to scale some feathers uh, for the uh, Distant War Cries piece. I uh, called them up to find out what the head measurement was, and that's from the bottom of the chin to the top of the head, or vice versa. And it's two inches. Now, I got a ruler here on this publishing program, and I've got the ruler set for 11 and a half inches, or 11 inches, I mean, um, for the page length. That scales this uh, ruler to exactly one inch uh, in actual size. So this square here, when I drew these feathers from actual feathers, I scaled them to a head measurement, which is eight and a half inches, or eight, ideally and uh, and I made a box that measures eight inches for the uh, scaling now I don't know if I'm making myself understood but uh, let me get this ruler over here so what I need to do <coughs> is make that head measurement from the top there to the bottom there and that's also one head measurement but once I get that established as two inches all the feathers will be automatically scaled so I just grab the edge the outer corner of the drawing and I set it up the box top of the ruler it's now three and uh, Oh, what is it? Uh, well, three and five eighths. Now I'm just gonna make that smaller until I match the two inches. Okay, I've gone too far, so I'll go back a little bit. Now it's almost exactly two inches, and that's close enough for me. And uh, I'll put it up here. And then I print it out, and that's what I get. An exact scaling of uh, the feathers to the size of the Indian that uh, I'm sculpting. And it just, it, it just makes it more authentic when the feathers look the right length and uh, size. The name of the program I use is called Printmaster. And uh, you can buy it online, and it's uh, it's a program I've used for it's got to be going on 20 years. And now I'm going to cut out the blanks. All right, I've had my wax softening for the last, you know, several hours under a light and it may be just a little too soft to put through my pasta machine but uh, I'll get it to the right temperature here in a second it's not too hot, it's just a little too soft in one part and a little hard on one part and so and it's a little too soft and sheddy to go through the pasta machine because uh, that part that sheds will stick to the wheel or the rollers and uh, it won't come out good okay there we go a perfect thickness and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut out the feathers and uh, Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double up on the uh, waxes. I'm going to, first of all, uh, that's so that I have a nice thickness for the feathers. They can't cast them so they're, when they're really, really small, so, or thin. So I'm going to see how many feathers I can get out of this batch. 
and it looks like about the two for the head and then two for the shield, which I'll need two more for the shield, so that's no big deal. Some armature wire, because no matter how hard the wax gets, you still need an armature in it. this uh, wax here and put this wax on top of that wire and that will give me an armature inside this now cut, cut the clay out for the feather That's the uh, one of the f two head feathers. Well, as you can see, I've got the uh, four shield feathers ready and the two head feathers ready. Now, and, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll work on the uh, two head feathers first. And uh, all right, what I did was I took this drawing or this photograph of the uh, warrior I'm doing the feathers for. These are the two head feathers here. And there's a shield right here. You can hardly see it. It's in the shadows underneath his arm, but it's on his back. And it just comes out from behind his back. Looks like I got one, two, three feathers that are coming from behind the uh, shield. I'm gonna try to sculpt that shield. There's a strap right there for the shield. And, uh, I already started this feather. Camera was off. And what I do is I just uh, scraped at an angle down towards the outer edge to make it thinner there than in the center. And I'll do something similar to that on the back. <coughs> this is one of uh, the tools from kenstools.com. And uh, he was kind enough to send me a few of his tools to try out, and uh, I love them. These are tools that the uh, movie business uses in their FX uh, sculpting of uh, monsters or, uh, oh, I can't even think of what they call it, prosthetics that they uh, put on people's faces or hands or whatever. Nice texture for the feather. I'm trying to figure out how to ship these feathers without having them get screwed up and uh, it's a little expensive but I've got this uh, plastic container from Costco that uh, I can tape them into to keep them from bouncing around and then I just put the lid on and it'll keep them from being bent or or crushed in the mail system so that's how I'm going to ship them just hope I can find a box the right size to put that in keep uh, rolling it till it gets out thin enough that you can use it Just about got it thin enough now. Okay. And the hardest things to do is get the quill to stay in one place and make it look uh, straight and and uh, right, and then matching the quills. 
with the angle of the uh, up a little bit. I'll put a few cuts in it just to make it look like it's been a worn feather, not a brand new one. feathers ready to go and uh, I'll turn off the camera now and just get back to work on getting all the other feathers done and I'll come back and show you how I'm going to load them up and then uh, work on the shield. Now well, here I am attaching the two feathers that will go on the head of the Indian in the uh, case and it, what happens is I put pressure here and the feathers rise off the uh, the uh, backing of this uh, case, so they're actually up in the air. So even more added uh, protection. So I'm going to just uh, get those ready to go. Now what I've done is I've created the other feathers on one side only because. Uh, these feathers are going to be at the bottom of the uh, shield coming out from underneath it. So all I need is to have them kind of match the shape of a shield. And uh, I'm going to do the shield right now. At least attempt to anyway. Now because I did this picture and it's the size and scale of the original clay. I can uh, make the shield and try to match it a little bit and maybe extend it there. And then they can, uh, at the foundry, place it. It's really hard to do this because it's uh, I'm so far away from the foundry. But where there's a will, there's a way. And I got the will. And now I got to find the way. What I got to do too is also do the uh, strap that goes from the shield to around his shoulder. So I've got to create that as well. Let's see. We'll cut this like that. a round shape and then we'll try to match up the feathers with the shield I think that works out pretty good all right I've got the uh, feathers and the shield in uh, this Tupperware container whatever it's called um, I've got the uh, stems for the feathers applied. I've got the sh uh, the uh, shield cover on the shield. And uh, that's going to all work out really nicely. I sent them an email with photographs of these items with instructions. 
But just in case they lose those instructions, I've made more. I'm sending them a, a copy of uh, where the shield is and the feathers and the head. And uh, also the scaled uh, printout of the uh, actual feathers that I did for this. Just so in case something da is damaged and the uh, artist that's re reproducing or finishing the uh, clay can use these uh, to uh, repair the feathers. Also, I wanted to show them the pattern for the coloring of the uh, bronze of the feathers, the end of the feathers. That's very important. I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look like that. And I've pointed to that. And uh, just sending them, letting them know that this is the scaled version of the uh, feathers. So all this is ready to go. I've got the uh, label printed up. I just need a box. All right, that's going to be it uh, for today. And uh, I'll see you next time.